Well, thank you all for coming. Um, my name is Morgan, and I'm um, just representing Nerfedora today. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got. Um, well, would you like to introduce yourselves in terms of? Um, so everybody knows me. Okay, so I'm Zbyszek. <laughs> uh, I work on packaging of uh, neuroscience and science-related stuff, and uh, I am currently in Fesco. Um, my name is Luis Vassan, uh, I am a member of the Nervo of the uh, I am a package maintainer, a um, member of the Basso, and um, a lot of uh, other teams, I don't remember the other teams now. And sorry, um, I'm Morgan Huff, and um, I'm kind of representing the neuroimaging tools in Nerfedora. Um, and uh, Ankur Sinha, who couldn't be here, um, is more representing the computational neuroscience tools uh, and has been, you know, the tour de force in terms of packaging. Um, uh, anyway, let me, these are, these are Ankur's slides, so um, bear with me if I'm, if I'm reading them with you. Uh, but, um, so, uh, yeah, uh, we started this uh, certainly more, uh, um, I was more interested in brain imaging tools and um, and here we got uh, a number of examples that um, uh, we've got tools uh, currently in not in release but uh, in queue for you know looking at neuromorphology. Um, there's lots of different kinds of um, neurons that uh, that you can model, and um, here we've got uh, a bunch of different brains um, and. Uh, Comparative, comparative anatomy is uh, another really interesting area. You know, a lot of the studies that we, that, um, that we look at are, um, you know, probably started um, with mice or rats, um, maybe even monkeys. Um, and of course, then we try and translate those into human studies. Um, there's, a, there's a great, um, there's a great uh, repository at uh, Institut Pasteur for, you can get MRI data on all these kinds of animals, um, naked mole rats, uh, dolphins. Um, so um, as, as we all probably hear about uh, the thousands of connections between neurons and um, uh, these kinds of models that, uh, that we use, uh, you know, both in computational neuroscience as well as um, you know and machine learning and, and kind of reinforcement learning which we'll talk about a little bit later um, and um, what's going on at these synapses really underlies our best understanding of learning today um, so we study a lot of different kind of um, levels and aspects of neuroscience um, the physiology and brain functions um, how it's structured in the neuroanatomy, and then uh, how we know that's, that's uh, at least how the physiology is broken down in terms of pharmacology and biochemistry. Um, and we can, um, well, we'll hopefully be doing a better job in splitting the tools up and showing you which tools are used for kind of which aspects of this. Um, and um, now, of course, uh, what we care about are these kind of computational models, um, both in terms of how the brain's doing something, and of course building up our own computational model on the computer of uh, of that process as well, right? And um, these uh, all relate to our concepts of um, uh, the kind of behavioral units and the behavioral analysis and the cognitive analysis. Um, so. And um, I myself apply this in uh, psychiatry, um, and it's just one of the diseases. I've also worked on um, multiple sclerosis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, different other, um, different uh, kind of clinical areas that uh, you wouldn't necessarily think have um, kind of a brain or neuro component to them. But um, neuroinflammation and um, neuroimmunology are, are two. Uh, really important areas uh, of development these days. Um, the uh, Human Brain Project, and I've, I've brought a few brochures that I brought from Geneva, 
uh, this is more of the Blue Brain Project, but um, uh, the Human Brain Project, you'll see um, some brain-inspired computing. Um, and there's, um, there's brain scales in uh, University of Manchester, and then there's uh, another group in Heidelberg. Um, anyway, neuromorphic computing, um, something that we, we don't have any of the tools um, currently packaged, um, but, uh, but that's something where these are all areas that we could use more, more packagers for. Uh, and uh, I certainly started in philosophy and uh, uh, consciousness, uh, consciousness studies are also a very hot area, um, at least in neuroimaging, um, where you look at uh, locked-in syndrome and uh, people in comas in terms of um, if they've lost the ability to actually communicate can, can you show a brain response to show that there is consciousness and kind of the philosophical and ethical implications of that? Um, at least in the case of um, Cambridge and um, uh, Adrian Owen, who's now moved uh, uh, to uh, uh, University of Western Ontario, um, they are looking to get consent from patients in terms of uh, these people need, uh, need a, a rather dangerous surgery. Um, can they? Can they ethically uh, consent um, to the surgery? Um, so, some of the research. Uh, well, here's just a, a general workflow that uh, you probably see in any any science lab, and and um, we're talking about Neurofedora today, but uh, we really want to see more, you know, uh, cross pollination between all the different SIGs um, and this kind of. Uh, we have we have theory leading into modeling, leading to experimental work, leading to data analysis, and and of course, uh, in some of these um, different tools are being used. This is um, a probably better uh, uh, directed graph representation of the relationship between these areas. <clears throat> okay, so tools of the trade. Um, this is uh, this is maybe a little more. A little more in my area in terms of um, here are the uh, the kinds of systems and the kinds of modalities that we collect. Um, so EEG and uh, electric quartograms, those are the intracranial re re recordings, um, as well as um, single and multi neuron recordings that you might do on just uh, slices of tissue um, or um, extracted nervous systems. And those are going to give you a bunch of time series. Um, you know, you, these days it's going to be, you know, multiple time series. Um, the uh, the CT and the MRI. Um, those are your more, you know, uh, well known 3D volumetric uh, techniques that um, that are giving you that um, that great representation of neuroanatomy. Um, DOI in this case is um, diffusion optical imaging, so we can use near infrared light um, as a um, as a means of, of actually capturing cheers, capturing um, capturing um, blood oxygenation. So fMRI, which is the MRI technique for looking at blood oxygenation. Um, can actually be uh, much more cost-effectively replaced with just a, a near-infrared sensor, and it will shine light right through your skull. Uh, so we do we do have some packages for near-infrared imaging, and then PET, being an MEG is actually another EEG package or modality, uh, just uses much more expensive sensors. Uh, PET is the the last one there as being um, a more uh, real nuclear radiation technique where you're going to ingest something that's going to be emitting uh, some high energy particles and um, but it's uh, PET is a terrific way of capturing a lot more of the kind of biochemistry and um, organic chemistry uh, depending on your sophistication of making making tracers um, so a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, neuroreceptor mapping that's been done in, in humans has been using PET uh, techniques. So, of course, in data analysis, um, 
you know, uh, the data analysis packages that, that we really want to see more of um, are going to be the ones that you're probably pretty familiar with in, in computational Python. Um, a lot of the computational Python packages are, were actually developed uh, by fMRI researchers. Uh, so uh, I don't know if anybody's familiar with uh, Seaborn, but, um, you know, that's a pretty common one uh, 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 for, for all sorts of uh, disciplines. Um, he was, uh, he was an fMRI researcher at Stanford. He's now moved up to University of Washington. Um, as well as, uh, you know, R packages and, um, and then uh, the kind of statistics behind things like uh, MCMC, so JAGS and STAN and, um, uh, and other tools um, that you'll see for what I would call statistics. Um, and then, um, you know, what we're going to hopefully talk about a little bit at the end is um, uh, some of the more traditional machine learning or deep learning tools and making sure those are packaged too because they're certainly, um, we see a lot of those being used in medical imaging for um, uh, both nonlinear registration and segmentation. So it's really, really improved those areas. Um, so we'll see a lot more dependencies uh, of big packages on those tools. So, and then simulators, um, you know, we really, uh, there's a great paper in Nature just recently about the, uh, the real scientific, um, the scientific utility of, of simulations. Um, and uh, uh, they got a lot of PIs from um, computational neuroscience labs to contribute to that article. Um, and that's uh, why we were presenting at uh, computational neurosciences in Barcelona this year, uh, where we had a poster. Um, so, um, yeah, the tools, the other tools to trade um, are the ones for, you know, academic writing, uh, blogging, podcasting, video making. Um, yeah, uh, we see a lot of, um, a lot of scientists these days are, are, you know, their own social media uh, agents uh, and it contributes a lot to their labs. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're certainly looking to see those tools in. I'd certainly like more tech live support. <laughs> But, uh, and under collaborative tools and utilities, um, yeah, we'll see. So um, I think this would be familiar for everyone who's at a Fedora flock uh, conference. Uh, everyone should have freedom to share, study, modify scientific material. And of course, you know, um, uh, you don't need a PhD to be a scientist. You don't have to publish in you know, nature or science to be a scientist, but you, you do, you need the tools and you need the scientific method uh, is basically what it, what's the requirements of being a scientist. Um, and um, that is, uh, that is really what's behind, um, you know, us being here at a Fedora conference in terms of uh, this, this applies to software, um, which are really the tools of the trade here. Um, so free open, uh, free open science implicitly includes and relies heavily on free and open software. And uh, here's a particular, you know, I, I, we could pull uh, so many, so many great references um, in the last couple of years. And, you know, I, I wouldn't want to leave out um, the uh, open access to journals because, um, uh, you know, that has been uh, you know, as important as anything else. If I don't know how many times where it's like, if I'm not connected to my VPN for something, um, where I link, uh, you know, somebody's got a, a, an actual journal article talking about open science, and uh, and I go to the, the, I hit a paywall saying like, please give me thirty-five dollars to read this article, <laughs> uh, uh, and sometimes it's uh, you know one hundred and thirty-five dollars. Um, so the um, yeah, the open open access to journals is uh, is as important as I'd say the software, um, and you know it's one thing to to say um, yeah it's not just the scientific method that you need but it's also what are the open problems in science today and you get that from reading the literature you know so um, just a little plug there for open access journals. Uh, so what can we do at Fedora to help? Um, well, neuroscience, I mean, certainly one of the things I love about neuroscience uh, and psychiatry 
um, is its multidisciplinary nature. Um, you know, we we are um, you know constantly working with people in different areas. Um, it's a uh, it's really you know interdisciplinary teams are the are the rule pretty much, um, and um, you know probably should have statisticians attached to this list. Um, but uh, you know, theoretical mathematicians, you know, certainly physicists, um, and uh, chemists and biochemists, and linking in, you know, metabolism, immunology, uh, and other areas, and then you know, uh, understanding what the cognitive scientists or psychologists are um, are dealing with too. And every uh, every one of these groups is is requires a. Another uh, another representative, which is uh, you know software engineering, really, um, and you know whether that's uh, I mean every lab that I've been a part of has had um, or every great lab that I've I've had the, the chance to be with um, you know has had a really uh, full time dedicated IT staff that has been why that institution is so productive. You know people coming in not having to worry about setting up computers, not having to worry about software conflicts and things like that, but just being able to get to work um, is, is the, another mark of, of you know, a, um, a well-staffed lab. Um, so too often, um, you know, we see this in terms of dealing with uh, upstream, you know, what you're, what you're really talking to is, uh, is probably a single developer working alone um, or small development teams where they all know each other. Um, you know, access to, you know, particular hardware and resources. Um, uh, although that's, I think that's changing more now with, with cloud computing. And um, certainly uh, uh, heterogeneous code, code quality, let's call it that. Um, and uh, limited use of established best practices because, um, you know, Again, usually the developers are also uh, the scientists, and uh, or more typically, they're the grad students <laughs> that are developing the, the algorithms. Um, so, you know, uh, again, these I think are certainly things are, are better than they have been, but um, you know, there's not really an established best practices that uh, they're widely applied. Um, how much testing goes on is another question, um, and you know the other thing being once you once you want to put things in Fedora and you want to get other labs using code, um, are they using that code for the same the same reasons that that person developed the code? Because they might have tests, but those tests are going to be pretty specific to that particular paper or that particular problem, um, and you know that's that's a that's what leads to the, the, the maintenance and, um, you know, the uh, interesting project uh, life, so life cycles that you see in terms of, um, you know, that person's usually working on that code until that paper gets out and then, you know, their priorities are going to have to change. So, um, yeah, depending on the lab, you're going to have a lot of different dependency chains. Um, and some of those they get to pick, some of those they don't. Um, and yeah, documentation obviously is uh, is another another big hole. Um, so we've got a lot of projects where we've got we've got a lot of code that we would like package, um, but uh, uh, a lot of those projects are lacking documentation. So um, yeah, the you know the community development. Um, I wouldn't say that the know-how is lacking. I'd say that the uh, the ability to get people's time is lacking. Um, you know, uh, everybody that I know that has has packaged codes to release is super interested in supporting it, but um, you know, they just uh, they just don't have it in their in their uh, yeah uh, under their control to to give you their time. So what we want to do, um, we want to you know. Try and reduce the time wasted, the effort installing, reinstalling, debugging, uh, you know, working out dependency problems, <clears throat> and uh, and try and get people more aware of um, you know how these how these things could be resolved. Hopefully in the packaging stage, hopefully in the in our own testing, um, and what 
what we bring in terms of having a having a process in Fedora um, that we can um, yeah so making sure that uh, yeah the test suites are actually run and things are reported upstream um, and uh, certainly that's 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 something you see where I know I saw someone saying that their software was downloaded uh, 1400 times uh, um, but you know if if it's buggy um, then you know that doesn't really matter and how many of those people are going to actually tell the person well I you know tried to run it but never could you know so just the downloads aren't necessarily the best uh, um, metric that people should be using to say yeah, my code's getting used. No, not not really. Um, anyway, what we're what we're trying to do is be a better liaison between the upstream and users. Um, you know, bring bring those best practices to uh, to a development process uh, in terms of what what is our our scope in, as packaging, um, and um, certainly we've got. Um, We've got potentially better infrastructure uh, for people to look across, uh, you know, across different processors and across uh, uh, particular versions. <clears throat> and what we want to do is is really help grow the community and um, you know and mind share, um, learning from one another, training as we work, uh, and disseminating information to end users. Okay, so um, yeah, the, so why did we start Nerfedora? Well, it was really to, to provide this integrated uh, free software uh, uh, platform for neuroscientists and brain imagers, um, you know, and I would say, again, like uh, across all the, the science SIGs, um, uh, that we're gonna, have, we're gonna have a lot of shared goals too. Um, <clears throat> and then, really improve the standard and maintain maintenance of these tools, help users uh, develop their own software development skills. Um, this might be the first place that they're gonna get some feedback because you know, it's usually not their advisor's job. Um, and um, yeah, and I, I would say not just make these neuroscience tools accessible to non-specialists, but, uh, but also to show um, how non-specialists can really contribute to um, a, a scientific software tool chain. Um, so, and obviously to make Fedora the go-to distribution for neuroscience and, and well, hopefully for open science. So um, what we are, have been doing, um, so leveraging some, some community resources um, uh, to this new domain um, and um, taking the community model of free open source uh, to neuroscience research. <clears throat> so um, less than a year old in its second iteration, <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's really been great seeing it uh, come alive. Um, and we've got 15 active contributors, 10 package managers, um, package maintainers, uh, five designers, newcomers. Um, there's a core of us with, with neuroscience background, uh, both computational and neuroimaging. <clears throat> and um, cer are certainly super uh, interested to help others learning. I brought a few brochures of, um, of projects from, from neuroscience, uh, computational neuroscience projects. Um, and we've got 105 packages ready to install today. Um, you know, even if, uh, even if you could uh, try those out and make sure that you can't, they, they do run, <laughs> you'd already be uh, contributing. Um, there's a whole lot more in the queue. Um, and uh, yeah, we just presented um, just, uh, just in July, um, uh, I was at, uh, uh, CNS in Barcelona, which was uh, it was great. They had a they had a really great day right before the meeting um, that was mostly covering software packages, uh, and um, it, it, which tells you how important that is to the you know scientific process that uh, that this you know 
almost half the conference was just training people on software tools. Um, so what do we want to do? Um, make more software available. Um, I know that uh, neuroimaging side, we've got some um, so we got some big holes in terms of complete pipelines. Um, oops, sorry. And uh, obviously improve the documentation. Um, that's, that's, uh, there's a lot missing there. Uh, once you, once you um, are dealing with the end users um, uh, and um, you know, how much we can do in terms of rolling out some support, but definitely increase the community and um, convert uh, you know, a research user base into, uh, into free and open source software contributors. And uh, you know, I, I know so many labs that really are doing things, but uh, they are, you know, effectively they're siloed. Um, and it's not for, you know, it's not that they don't want to contribute, but uh, a lot of them just don't know how, or you know, what are the best ways to, to, get, uh, to get their work out there. Um, so, and then of course, uh, convert uh, free open source software contributor base into, into users. And um, that's something that we we'll want to try and link some of the educational, um, educational opportunities that are part of Human Brain Project and things like that to, is uh, around getting software engineers involved um, in scientific projects. So anything is uh, just more Fedora, really. Uh, packaging, testing, containers, documentation, evangelism, marketing, and design. Um, and here's, uh, here's our mailing lists. We're at IRC, uh, Telegram, um, the, the docs um, and blog. And of course, we're using um, all, the, all the normal Fedora tools um, for infrastructure. So, uh, for time. Um, there's more science in Fedora than just than just neuro. Um, so uh, you know, I I would love to learn more from people in uh, astronomy, uh, big data, machine learning, electronic uh, lab SIGs, or medical and sci-tech. Um, some of these have you know been kind of um, uh, sleeping for a while. Some of them might not uh, really have any active active developers. Um, but, uh, but I will say just, you know, checking a few, uh, uh, key search terms last night, um, you know, that some, some really old SIG pages come up if I just put in some simple terms and, you know, I'd love to, to get those, um, updated, uh, in that, you know, there's a lot of common infrastructure in terms of scientific tools across disciplines that, uh, that we could be sharing and, um, and these days, uh, the the relationship between machine learning and neuroscience is, you know, becoming more and more interesting. Uh, and certainly, I I attend conferences on, on both, uh, as well as specific conferences that uh, look at the the interaction of those. So at Neural PS this year, I know there's going to be AI and neuroscience uh, uh, special workshops. Um, Montreal University of Montreal at McGill. Um, are uh, do an annual uh, machine learning and AI um, AI and neuroscience meeting that will be coming in October, um, and um, and then for medical imaging, there's a there's another great uh, uh, conference um, that is in China this year, um, and what you're seeing there in medical imaging and radiology is the overlap of deep learning. Uh, you know, deep learning is really taking over a lot of uh, automated radiology and, and medical imaging uh, projects. Uh, so, neuroscience is not all about working on core research. Um, you know, like I said, uh, there's there's a lot uh, of um, well, there's a lot of best practices in software engineering that are uh, that are really overlap with you know best practices in science in terms of <coughs> reproducibility in terms of testing, in terms of documentation. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm glad to see that. Um, open source brain I'm not too familiar with, um, but uh, you know, this and Human Brain Project are 
There are a lot of really accessible sites that I'm happy to point people to, um, to, to learn more. Uh, Open Worm, again, I'm not sure how, how active this is, but um, you know, there's a, there's a very simple C. elegans, uh, is a, it's like 128 neurons, I think, or something. Uh, anyway, it's, a, it's something that should be relatively easy to uh, create a full bottom-up model. Um, they're still working on it, uh, but uh, there's some great projects that relate to that. Here are some, um, this is something I'm, I'm a little more familiar with, although I, I don't know these particular people. But uh, again, um, Montreal does an annual, uh, and human brain mapping does, does annual science art uh, where people take various things. Uh, uh, I thought one of the great, uh, one of really interesting ones was um, somebody who uh, programmed an MRI scanner so that its, its beeps and sounds actually played a tune. <laughs> I thought it was also interesting in terms of making an MRI actually play a song. Um, different kind of art, but uh, anyway. Um, so uh, myth two, only researchers can do neuroscience. It's too hard, no, absolutely not. Uh, but it just, it requires, it, it's that same discipline, you know? And so if you're, if you're familiar with good practices, best practices in software engineering, then, you know, in many ways, you're, you're ready to do science. Um, and uh, uh, so this particular, so he's got a little, yeah, spike time independent plasticity example here. Um, yeah, you'll see, I, I guess the, the blue neuron is, is representing a, a perception uh, of, of food and, um, and then another of smell. Um, or is that the smell and then determining curry? Uh, I, I'm not sure, but uh, the the uh, what you're seeing there is that uh, this is two two neurons that fire together are um, are having some some plasticity, and um, these are getting modeled. Here's here's just an example of Nest, uh, which is one of the things that we do have packaged currently. Um, uh, Nest is a, is a great package for doing. Um, large simulations of, of a lot of neurons with some sort of connectivity that you've got in a matrix. Um, and uh, I don't think there's a picture with that, but um, anyway, why don't we, um, thank you so much. Hello everybody, I'm here just for two or three minutes. Uh, my name is Lumir Balhar, I am a Python developer, data analysis and Python maintainer from Red Hat. And as Morgan said, a lot of SIX in Fedora was inactive for quite a long time. For example, machine learning SIG was inactive for the whole time it exists, basically. <laughs> but I'm here to kind of revive it. So, uh, and I need your help. And I think that we are a lot of common with machine learning data analysis and neuroscience, as been said. So, the main goal of machine learning SIG is to uh, make Fedora the best platform for machine learning and artificial intelligence developer. And we are really want to do that, but we need something from you. And what we are looking for is, uh, we need a lot of information together because I am data analysis, I am machine learning developer, but I don't know anybody else who did it, except two people on mailing list. Which, yeah, it's not that much. So, uh, if you want to share your experience with machine learning tools, libraries, at software on Fedora with us, it will be really appreciated. We need to know what doesn't work for you. We can help fix it, package new stuff, etc. What works for you also, we need to know some success stories. I mean, if you are using some machine learning data analysis, etc. tool in Fedora for a long time, let us know and we will create some blog post promoting that Fedora is a good platform for machine learning and data analysis. Uh, if you miss something in Fedora, again, let us know and we will do our best to package it and to make it ready for you. As I said, some success stories and if you create an interesting project, anything related to machine learning and artificial intelligence, let us know, please. Uh, use mailing list, I'll show you contact in a while. What we can offer, we can help you with packaging, new software, or also package maintenance. If you have a lot of packages you need to take care about and you don't have that meant much time, let us know. 
Uh, also, if you in neuroscience or in science at all, if you have any problem with machine learning, data analysis, etc., etc., let us know. We will do our best to help you solve your problem. Always the best if you know uh, more people take a look or anything else. If you can imagine something we can help you with, we are experienced developer mostly in Python, but also in other languages, and we know a lot of uh, a lot about packaging stuff for Fedora. So anything else you can imagine, we can help you with. Uh, the main contacts are mailing list for machine learning, uh, IRC channel also for machine learning Fedora, and I was inspired by Telegram group for Neuro Fedora. So. Telegram is coming soon in summer as well. <laughs> Maybe also we will bridge from IRC to Telegram. Uh, but yeah, feel free to use anything or to contact me. Uh, we just created a sick group, uh, sorry, fast group. Uh, so now we are able to comment in packages in the right way. Uh, so yeah, we are almost ready. Uh, but I thank you very much that I can use a part of your talk for this uh, because I am really new in machine learning sick and trying as i said i'm trying to revive it so i missed the CL cfp deadline for flock so i cannot do my own talk so i just this two minutes free at all thank you very much uh thank you um and um yeah i wanted to mention with just a well did anybody have any questions that didn't get addressed all right uh so, yeah, please. Um, I guess, like, like, what are the kind of like major pitfalls that the project has right now? Uh, good. Well, it, in, in, at least in my opinion, on the, the neuroimaging, we're, we're missing some, some kind of um, some real staple packages. Uh, you know, like, uh, if I was going to do a course, which we, we've done previously as part of human brain mapping, um, you know, there are a couple pipelines that, you know, are going to be the, the go-to's in terms of, you know, I've, I've done an fMRI study. Um, this is, this is how, this is how everybody else does it. And, um, uh, you know, what is, what is really great, at least in, in at least in fMRI, um, is that, uh, there is lots of open data. So I wanted to, um, uh, somewhat related to this, I just wanted to push uh, Open Neuro uh, as a great resource in terms of um, you know you can you can download and play with you know real human fMRI data today, um, and they'll give you some of the resources. Um, you know something. Um, well, a anybody else want to speak to what are some of the the limitations or you know holes in the? Yeah, I think I have the same feeling that. If you try to do some real science, that you you find that well, hundred packages are there, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we talked we talked about Phoenix missing. We talked about uh, yeah, another context. Uh, there's this, this cytoscape thing for yeah. doing uh, graph plotting and many many other stuff that is missing, and. Um, I think that the, the number of u scientific users of Fedora uh, is not high enough to, to attain good feedback loop where people complain when stuff is broken and uh, as a result there is stuff missing and the quality sometimes of the stuff in the package is not high enough. And uh, if we well make, uh, make it possible to use uh, Fedora f as a, as a provide the full experience, I think that this will improve and then there will be a positive feedback loop. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that's something I've certainly experienced is that like meeting a lot of people who are using Fedora, but they, um, they haven't been contributing back. I mean, they just didn't, didn't know that there was a group um, that uh, they could potentially be, you know, uh, getting some of their contributions passed on. Um, but also in talking, um, you know, it was great to see in Igor's talk about, uh, you know, cross distro uh, collaborations. Um, you know, a lot sometimes, uh, you know, we could be working more with NeuroDebian in terms of uh, if we've got s some issues with uh, upstream choices, um, we could be working quite well with them in terms of uh, getting more people, you know, showing that there's more people that would be interested in getting those changes. Um, 
So um, yeah, there's there's a lot of great uh, there's a lot of opportunities for for getting involved and helping. Um, but uh, yeah, whether whether we've got complete pipelines for for um, you know our, kind of our core uh, our core focus is is yeah is questionable. One good thing that is happening is that um, Python, and in particular Python 3 support in Fedora is really good. And uh, Python is the language of uh, yeah. science. So if you want to develop software for, for scientific purposes, uh, then it makes a lot of sense to, to switch to Fedora. And I think we should be able to take advantage of that. Yeah, I wanted to say that there are many, many fields in neuroscience that use a lot of like yeah. people analyzing um, modern behavior. Yes. And there are certainly packages. So also probably reaching out to scientists, you know, and asking them what kind of software they're using, what kind of software they would like to have in the distribution, what would make them change their operating system to something else. Exactly. This is the same for machine learning. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, uh, I wanted to also just make a, a, a quick pitch, or at least uh, tell people about um, BrainHack. So you know, we're kind of focused on packaging and getting things into Fedora. But if you want to learn more and um, and have a community where you know other people. Uh, are doing kind of citizen science. Um, BrainHack's another great, uh, uh, is a great resource, at least for the neuroimaging. Um, they can point you to the, um, the open data repositories that exist. Uh, in computational neuroscience, uh, you know, the, it, its strength is that uh, you're usually doing simulations. <laughs> so, um, you know, we can generate data. Uh, uh, I mean, generating data is what we're what we're trying to do with these tools, um, and uh, I'm not sure some of those uh, if there's an equivalent to brain hack for those. Um, uh, in terms of the uh, people building their own EEG equipment, at least um, Neurotech X is another great uh, another great site, uh, another great organization. They've got chapters uh, worldwide. Um, uh, based in Montreal, but um, you know chapters all over, and um, you know EEG equipment and um, at least cheap uh, uh, transcranial direct current stimulation equipment is is very easy to build, um, and there's a lot of good uh, good resources for people uh, working on their own. Um, anything else you want to cover? Uh, uh, yeah, I. As well as uh, as a lot of stuff is packaged, but not documented, you know, and uh, it's it's hard it's hard to test <laughs> when when you yeah. Uh, uh, any other questions? Any other questions? Uh, Yeah, or I I saw that same time. <laughs> so uh, I when when is the hackathon? Uh, tomorrow. Well,
But if if people if people want to get involved and you're not sure, you know where where your talents. Yeah, ten a.m. Ten a.m. Sorry, sorry. I spy. We will we will also be working at ten p.m. But sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, please please join us. Uh, and the other thing is, you know. Um, Please uh, come talk to me uh, if you're not sure how your skills can be best used. Like, there's always, uh, you know, depending on what uh, what you're familiar with already. If you want to put those skills to use, uh, I'm telling you, there's there's uh, there are opportunities. If there's new things that you want to learn, um, uh, I'd be very happy to point you to. Uh, you see, if you don't have uh, IRC, uh, use uh, Telegram. Telegram. Group, uh, yeah, mailing list, yeah, uh, uh, chat with, with, with yes. people, no problem. Uh, uh, you have, if you have the role of packer, you uh, come. If you don't have the role, come. Uh, you work uh, with your first package, no problem. Uh, yeah, sponsor, package sponsor, uh, package sponsor, yeah. Well, the, uh, a lot of people in this in this conference is a special of past years. And hey, hey, let's go and head to the neuroscience. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's nice. Th thank you so much. Um, I think that's. Uh, thank you so much.